Academic Paul Krugman is at it again, trying to figure out where to lay the blame for Detroit's bankruptcy. Everyone's favorite pseudo-intellectual academic is now pointing his finger at the sheer size of metropolitan areas for causing high unemployment in cities. He cites a progressive study that says good jobs are literally out of reach for inner city workers because they lack the ability to travel outside of their neighborhoods. In other words, he's blaming the companies and the residents that left places like Detroit instead of looking at the progressive policies that caused them to leave in the first place. Detroit used to have plenty of jobs until, as we've explained on this program, the unions took over, both public and private, and the taxes went up. And it only made sense for businesses eventually to leave Detroit, and then the residents soon followed. So instead of suggesting cities like Detroit should make changes to attract more businesses back into the city, Krugman is offering the predictable solution of providing more public transportation and even endorses policies that, quote, help families function without multiple cars. Yeah, because... People not buying cars would totally help Detroit. The one thing Krugman left out of his solution is who's going to pay to bring opportunity to the inner city worker. A city like Detroit can't even keep its streetlights on, so there's no money there. So then it's pretty clear to me that the people he thinks caused the problem by moving out are the ones that should foot the bill. Let me let, me let you a little secret there, Paul. People don't like paying high taxes when it doesn't benefit them. And the concept of the greater good, most people don't buy into that when it comes to their own money. Here to talk about this is friend of the program, Ed Butowski, founder of Chapwood Investments. All right, I want to go right to this because here you have Krugman blaming the people leaving the city and the businesses leaving the city for their for the demise, even though it's progressive economic policy that forced them out. Mm -hmm. I think this is going to create a distortion in the bond market, especially if... Uh, the 100,000 creditors for Detroit, they lose all their money. Well, I mean, look, we've had bonds. And I know we disagree here, so let's, 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 let's get this out. Right. I mean, look, conceptually, if people don't like what's going on in, in Detroit and, and there's all these creditors, is that going to be indicative of other bond markets? Well, it will be if those ratings are lower. I mean, this happened because they did not have enough money to pay their debt. They went bankrupt. Now, remember something else. It's the general obligation bonds that went bankrupt. Those are the ones that are called the ad valorem tax. Those are the ones from taxing properties. The revenue bonds have not gone bankrupt. But those bonds in Detroit have gone bankrupt. And, they, and at the same time, you're seeing this in California. You're going to see more and more of that, but that's not going to keep people from investing in bonds. Because of this, interest rates went up 8 basis points to 20 basis points on Wait, bonds. So you're telling me that if, if, if investors are looking at municipal bonds, mm -hmm. uh, uh, city bonds, whatever you want to call them, yeah. and they see city politicians creating policies that drive people out and cause the city to collapse, Chicago's on the way to this. They have all kinds of problems, right. too. I'm going to see this as not worth the risk. If I feel like the city might go, a judge might clear a debt sheet and say, all these are now forgiven. Well, with that, that's when you get to that point. I mean, there is something called the trust indenture that is out there, and it's the, it's the law of a municipal bond. And they look at what, you know, there are certain things that are senior and certain things that are junior. Real simple, when I look at municipal bonds, and anyone who's a municipal bond buyer, what they look at is what is the coverage ratio, what is the rating. Well, why would you want to invest in a city where you see people leave not coming? Well, it, it, because you have to look at the, the term of the maturity. There's a lot more to it, because right now, some municipal bonds and the taxable equivalent, you're going to make somewhere around seven and a half to eight percent taxable equivalent in some of these bonds i'm not saying that you should go out and invest in municipal bonds in cities that are, have a lot of risk but i will tell you that the majority of municipal bonds are not rated triple a they're rated double a and uh, single a so there is risk there it's a great place at this moment in a lot of cities to put municipal bonds am i buying them no oh okay no, no, but let me but let me tell you why because interest rates are rising that's okay. why but in terms of credit quality i'm not buying them all right, let's talk about um, Obama's jobs plan, because I thought he saved Detroit. I thought, <laughs> I know. you know, here you have Paul Krugman writing this piece saying, we've got to find ways to nudge people back to the cities yeah. and with uh, these uh, smart growth policies. They should live, as he called it, in compact urban centers. People don't want to live in compact urban centers if yeah. they can afford to live outside. If they can get a nice house with a piece of land and low taxes, that's where people are going to go. He's saying the cities are entitled to have these people repatriated to them, but... 
People like Obama are the the reason why people left Detroit. Yeah, Krugman spent way too much time on a kibbutz somewhere because he thinks we're all in this thing together. <laughs> and you know what? We are in this, you know, we have, the, that's what's so great about this country. We have the opportunity to make decisions on where we want to live, where we want to work. And we're not, you know, we want to help people and that's our choice to help people. But at the same time, it's not the people who left the city's fault. It's those progressive policies. That's why people left. That's why they moved down to Texas. That's why they're moving to other places, leaving Detroit because of the progressive policies, because of the unions. And you know what? Elections have consequences. And they elected these types of policies. And because of that, this city has gone from millions of people who live in that city to 700,000 and less. And it's getting smaller and smaller. And you know what? They get what they deserve because they elected those policies. Some people like living in, what does he call them again? Compact. I have to find this. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you like that, don't you? Compact. He calls it compact living with, uh, and he calls these smart growth policies. But some people want a backyard. Not everybody wants to live in an apartment right. and only outdoor space being provided by the public parks. Some people want their own private property to use as outdoor space. And that seems to bother these people because the cost of that is people leaving and taking their prosperity with them. And the big complaint here is now all these people have to travel. It used to be you traveled into the city for a job. Now they're saying you have to travel out of the city. But whether it's green space or wanting multiple cars or just not wanting right. to be bled to death for social programs, people are leaving cities. Well, but that's the way cities are growing. I mean, you build these highways. You know, I live in a city where we build highways. There's been a lot of growth outside of the major cities. People go back and forth to wherever those jobs are. Getting to your job should not be the question of, you know, if you're going to take a job or not take a job. I mean, in New York City, you know, there's, there's subways, there's buses. Yes, there's cost to them. That's the cost of doing, you know, business. But, you know, we have a lot of reverse commutes that go on. The city of Houston, same way. Dallas, same way a lot of these major cities people are moving out of those cities into the into the nice suburbs and you know what that's a good thing in a lot of cases in some cases if you live in the middle of the city and your job's outside guess what move it's your choice no one's forcing you to live in the middle of the city but, but for some reason it seems to be the belief of, of progressive academics that you know this guilt class that they've created are, are like should, should suffer some kind of consequence for leaving because look at the damage they've done let me get to obama's lowering of the tax rate 28 percent across the board 25 percent preferred mm -hmm. for manufacturers that was mitt romney's uh well he wanted 25 percent yeah. across the board but even during the reagan years cities were not responding by being rational with their tax their tax policy in some states like New York and California, we're also being irrational. I mean, do you think this is actually going to make a difference if the Republicans go for it? Well, I, th I think it's a move in the right direction. I, there's no question about it. Cutting taxes. Could have done, done, done it five years ago. Well, we could have done it a long time ago and not put this country at such tremendous risk. I have been saying we are in stagflation. The only cure for stagflation is to cut taxes across the board. Well, it sounds like he's finally starting to listen to you and me. You know, here, here's the thing. He could have done all of these things in 2009. Without question. When he had the House and the Senate. That's right. And he went for the stimulus package. Now he wants this to be coupled to a new stimulus package, but right. we already had the stimulus package and it caused more unemployment. So cutting these taxes should have nothing to do with more government spending. It should be allowing people and businesses to use that money to enhance their lives and their businesses. Yeah. That's what it should be. All right. Thanks, Ed. Thank you for joining us. Good to have you in studio. I like having you in studio.